Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel and I'd like to welcome everyone back to this week's episode of Daki Time. So on this week's episode of Daki Time we're going to cover a few points very briefly mind you over the couple of things that we are getting wrong in World of Warcraft and in particular Battle for Azeroth. So this is going to be a very brief hopefully quick video. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this video but in the upcoming videos I'm going to break down every single one of these points and go into a lot more detail in why these could be happening. So let's talk about what we are getting wrong in Battle for Azeroth and what the potential end game here for um, BFA could quite possibly be. So let's dive in real quick and cover these points. So first, let's talk about Magni. Now Magni is supposed to be the speaker for Azeroth and in some upcoming broadcast text from 8.2, we do know that he could be talking to Nazoth, not necessarily Azeroth. Now, whether this be he's talking through Azeroth to us or Nazoth is corrupting um, Azeroth and basically showing visions to Magni, we don't know that yet, but we do know that Nazoth is corrupting Magni in some way or some form. But, but, but what is Magni doing? He is getting us to gather Azerite. He's also tasking us with closing the wounds around Azeroth. Now, this could play into Nazoth's plans real quick, and we do know from um, both Anduin and Sylvanas that, that Azerite is extremely powerful. Now, if Magni is being used by Nazoth, then we are collecting Azerite and closing these wounds for Nazoth's plans, like I said. Now, what could this be? This could simply be to help him break free of his change, uh, chains and start unleashing the Black Empire again. This could be several reasons why, but it, I mean, there's no other reason why Nazoth would not use Magni to break free. I mean, he doesn't want to be in prison. He wants to um, feel, fulfill his desire to corrupt the world soul. But un, 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 enough on that, and let's talk about that in a future video. But this leads us into Ajara. Now, as we know it so far, Ajara is working for Nazoth, and we know that Nazoth is in prison under the sea, and the only way he can really break free is by using Ajara to bring us to him. Now, I'm thinking with the Azerite we've collected over the last couple of um, uh, quest lines with Magni, or even with the Void Stone, and more on that one later, obviously. Now, Nazoth does state in the last round of Whispers that she will bring, uh, she will show you the way. Come, come. The hour approaches when all eyes shall be open. Now. I believe this is not Sylvanas showing us the way, rather Ajara showing us the way to Nazoth, and we are there to unlock Nazoth, basically. Um, it says something along the lines of um, the seven keys or the keys to unlock the way. This could be the keys to unlocking the chains. Now, um, yeah, it's it's definitely not Sylvanas showing us the way, but rather Ajara. Um, and the all eyes shall be open could be us seeing Nazoth for the first time or him um, seeing everything for the first time, all eyes shall be opened once we unlock and uncage him. So again, we could be wrong about um, uh, Magni leading us into the plans for uh, Ajara and Ajara leading us to Nazoth. So what about Sylvanas? So Sylvanas, first of all, is an extremely powerful character within the World of Warcraft lore. She is very powerful, very uh, patient, as it says in another whisper, very... Um, far seeing she can she can plan her moves uh, a long time out but it goes without saying that when she held the azurite for the very first time her eyes lit up um she might have seen a vision through the Azerite, understanding that Nazoth is alive and plotting, and this leads her to create or make plans to combat this. So she knows that Nazoth is a very bad evil, and she needs to somehow make plans to stop this. She's in a uh, position of power to, to stop this. Um, but what are her plans realistically? Then no bigger plan than to bring both the Horde and Alliance together to uh, to fight Nazoth or to fight what is to come. I mean, the Horde and Alliance work really well together when, when brought together. We know this from Mr. Pandaria when we had to fight Garrosh, and she might know this, and she might need to bring the Horde and Alliance together. But how do you bring two factions together? Well, you create a third faction, or a, or a third force, basically. She is this third third faction with, you know, Nilthana, uh, the Blightcaller guy. <laughs> basically, she is the third faction. 
And what she does is she makes herself the big bad evil of both factions, both the Horde and the Alliance. What this does is it forces the Horde and the Alliance to work together and become stronger. If you go back and you listen to her very, very first sentence of Battle or yeah, Battle for Azeroth, she basically states that we are weak and what makes us strong, we have forgotten. So basically, she is becoming an outlier, um, bringing down both the Horde and the Alliance together, that then they band together and become one big powerful force. Now, I'll talk a lot more about this on an upcoming video because she has a lot of uh, stuff to cover, basically. But you can see that the Horde and the Alliance leaders are talking to make plans um, basically to, to combat uh, Sylvanas. So she is doing something and it's working. So we could be wrong about Sylvanas in that she is not doing this to destroy the Horde and the Alliance, but rather to bring them closer together. And then once we see what her end goal here is, then we might actually understand why she has done this in particular. So now Nazoth. What about Nazoth? Well, Nazoth is an old god, and old gods were tasked by the Void to take control of world souls, or titans, to set the stage for the Void coming into this realm. See, the Void cannot exist in this plane yet, but Nazoth is trying to bring the Void into this realm, then he must let Azeroth not wake up. Um, he needs to corrupt uh, uh, Azeroth, basically. Um, the, the closing of the wounds and the gathering of the Azerite could be uh, a way to stop Azeroth from waking up. We don't know this yet, but it could be such that his plans to do this is keeping her in a slumber and thus he can start and continue to corrupt her. Maybe he's doing this, he gets set free, he raises the Black Empire to oppose us basically so that he can corrupt Azeroth. So with all that said... What about Sargeras? Now, Sargeras, we could be quite, quite wrong. At the end of Legion, we do see Sargeras plunge his sword into Azeroth. And we initially believed that this was da uh, you know, uh, dangerous and is going to kill Azeroth. And his intent was to kill Azeroth. But what if his intent here was to break uh, a seal to wake Azeroth? Maybe he knew... Nazoth was still part uh, of this world, that he was still attached to the deep, dark ocean, and he had to wake Azeroth to stop Nazoth from corrupting her, to stop Nazoth from bringing forth the void. See, it does not fit Sargeras's motive, it doesn't fit his character to continually kill world souls. That's not what he was about, that's not what he is about. And if you go back and read all of his past events, sure, he um, killed one world soul that he believed that it was too far gone, that he could not remove the old gods at that stage. So you got to understand that Sargeras, we could be completely wrong about his motive here. He could be simply trying to wake Azeroth to stop all of this from unfolding, to stop Nazoth getting a foothold on Azeroth itself. So guys, that is a very brief, brief overview. I know I've covered all these topics very quickly and only just plucked out little bits and pieces of this. And this is the this is the whole goal here. It was just to get you guys thinking about what we could be wrong about Battle for Azeroth and the plans for all these major characters leading up to the end of Battle for Azeroth and potentially into the next expansion. Guys, in the next coming videos, which will be released very soon, I'm going to be talking about every single one of these points I just made up, uh, made here into a lot more detail, a lot more detail. And I'll be uh, supporting evidence with the whispers and, and why this could all be happening. So guys, thank you so much for being patient and watching this, this video. I do very much appreciate it. If you like these videos, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel as it, it directly supports me. Well, the fastest way to support me really is to subscribe. So guys, thank you again. And until next time, have a great day.